Hello everyone, today is 23rd of January, now it's uh, 10 past 2, middle of the day by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for a day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Second update will be a little bit late in the afternoon on my Patreon page. And in between the updates, uh, I will upload on both channels on YouTube and Rumble. Headlines, new episode of Headlines, short uh, video about news that I will talk about during the second update. And later on this evening, uh, about 9 or 10 o'clock, I will have a live stream on my Rumble channel. So I hope you will find the time to join the conversation. Live stream will feature new episode of uh, Telegram Reports program. And of course, uh, I will be actively engaged with, uh, with the community. And I will try to answer to the questions that I see in, uh, in the chat, as I do uh, always uh, during these live streams. Uh, that's been said, let's talk about news now. And first of all, of course, uh, breaking news for this moment, which is that Russian armed forces conducted yet another wave of uh, missile strikes on uh, military and logistical infrastructure of Kyiv regime during the early hours of Today, according to latest reports that we have, main target of Russian strike was uh, whatever is left from uh, military industrial complex of uh, Kyiv regime and uh, most likely, most likely munition depots, points of concentration of uh, manpower of uh, Ukrainian armed forces and warehouses where Kyiv regime is storing its, uh, its weapons. Main direction of uh, uh, strikes were Kharkov region, Kyiv region, also Sumy region and Dnipropetrovsk, although all the media outlets are reporting that uh, uh, majority of uh, targets were in Kharkov and uh, Kyiv directions. That's been said, well, let's, uh, let's continue with the situation on the line of uh, contact. I will stop only on Avdevka area to make this video as short as possible, because according to latest reports, Russian forces managed to establish control over the so-called uh, over the so-called uh, military base, uh, air base on the southern western part of Avdeka and also Chiburashka stronghold. It seems like Ukrainian defense lines on the southern and southern western flanks of Avdeka are collapsing. And uh, well, if Russian advances continue in this uh, this rapidly, this fast, then uh, well, maybe about it will not take more than a week and Russian forces will be in the central parts of Avdevka or maybe one entire city will become under full Russian control in next uh, week or two. Because it seems like it seems like your regime is unable to stabilize its uh, defense lines in this uh, city, at least for now. Yesterday, according to Ribor military channel, yesterday Kyiv regime conducted the Contraoffensive in Avdevka using at least battalion and the uh, Russian side repelled this uh, local scale contraoffensive of Ukrainian forces. And in the mix of battle, it seems like uh, some uh, Ukrainian units get confused, some Ukrainian um, crews of armored vehicles get confused, they end up in small pockets of being encircled and were neutralized. As a result of it, some uh, armored vehicles of Ukrainian forces were far, far away from main epicenter of battles. According to some reports that I see, maybe crew of those um, vehicles were trying to hide or, or escape battlefield. Uh, hard to say what happened, but um, well, they end up right next to Russian positions and were neutralized, including Bradley's, by the way. And uh, I expect today or tomorrow to see some video and uh, photo material about this uh, failed Ukrainian counteroffensive. And as I said, if Kyiv regime will be unable to stabilize situation in Avdevka, then most likely garnison of Avdevka will collapse and this city will become under full Russian control in next uh, week or two, maybe even maybe even days. Overall, overall situation is. Uh, um, Overall, Russian forces are maintain, maintaining, uh, of course, uh, initiative all along the front line and increasing pressure on Ukrainian armed forces. And 
according to Russian Defense Ministries, yesterday's report on progress of special military operation as a result of this increased pressure ukrainian armed forces just in the previous days lost uh, previous single day lost about thousand military personnel 15 tanks a uh, few dozen of uh, other type of armored vehicles including infantry fighting vehicles so significant increase in losses on part of uh, Kyiv regime and uh, well we have indicators now we clearly have indicators that uh, at some areas at some areas, Ukrainian defense lines are collapsing, and uh, if this will continue, if uh, Ukrainian forces will will can, will, will uh, begin to collapse, then most likely, most likely, the Russian side will begin final preparations for a possible possible large large scale offensive operation, which may take place uh, somewhere in mid February, maybe. Yet again, it, it all depends uh, in what conditions Ukrainian defense lines and Ukrainian armed forces will be. Uh, as I said many times before, when when we will see collapse of Ukrainian defense lines in in, in a big scale, it being in big numbers, then most likely Russian side will begin decisive actions to make sure that casualty numbers are as low as possible and damage on the ground is also as minimal as uh, possible. Because after all. It's Russia and Russian taxpayers that will rebuild all these areas, all these settlements that were destroyed uh, during these uh, high-intensity clashes between the between the sides. Because I believe uh, entire Ukraine, with the exception of Western regions, will be under full Russian control once this once this conflict will end. And of course, it will be it will be a responsibility of Russian uh, Federation and Russian taxpayers eventually. To finance, uh, to finance uh, rebuilding process and integration process of uh, this historical Russian land uh, to Russian Federation. That's been said. Uh, let's continue with some additional news. I remind you, dear friends, that there are plenty of military channels that are reporting more detailed in more detail about these local scale skirmishes on the line of contact. And if you are interested in more details, uh, of course, uh, you should check those uh, channels. My project mainly is about news that is relevant in Russia. I don't have a military channel, by the way, and I'm no military expert. That's been said, let's continue now. And well, Ria Novosti reported about these uh, strikes, Russian strikes uh, on military industrial complex of uh, Kyiv regime. In Kyiv direction, in Kharkov direction, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there were some uh, explosions heard in Dnipropetrovsk and Sumy regions. Also, TASS news agency is reporting that uh, press spokesman of Russian president Dmitry Peskov uh, was asked about today's strikes, uh, if uh, this is a retaliation of Russian side for um, recent shelling of uh, central parts of Donetsk, residential areas of Donetsk by Kyiv regime. Uh, forces when uh, 27 civilians were killed and uh, more than 20 wounded and Piskov uh, said that this is not a uh, retaliation this is a planned operation and I have to agree because I believe this uh, scale of operations are planned way ahead this is not a spontaneous decision and most likely this exact operation was uh, prepared at least a week ago maybe even two weeks ago uh, i don't believe that these large-scale operations are conducted uh, based on emotions it's uh, it's not working like that i guess also ria Novosti is reporting that uh, according to russian defense ministries yesterday's update on progress of special military operation during the previous days uh, previous single day russian air defense system shut down uh, six storm shadow cruise missiles that was launched by regime one may wonder how many of those missiles storm shadows and also scalpel by the way which is a french analog of storm shadow how many of those missiles have uh, Kyiv regime and how many of those missiles are left in uh, uk and uh, france uh, i'm asking this because at this point it's it's becoming obvious that uh, governments of nato member states are jeopardizing security of their own countries and defense capabilities of their own countries by sending so much weapons to Kyiv regime which will eventually lose anyway 
just to prolong this proxy war that Western ruling class is uh, waging against Russia. But yet again, this is issue of, first of all, for, uh, for, for Western societies, if they are okay that their governments are jeopardizing their security, then, well, what are you going to do about it? RIA Novosti is reporting that Russian air defense systems also shut down Su-25 of Ukrainian Air Force in Kharkov direction, most likely in Kupiansk sector of the front line. And uh, uh, I believe many of you are asking questions how many of those planes still are left in hands of Kyiv regime. I don't know, dear friends. Uh, I guess not that many. But uh, we should uh, notice that uh, Washington, London, Brussels and uh, other capitals of NATO member states did quite a job to collect all these Soviet airplanes worldwide whenever they could and, uh, and uh, to deliver them these uh, planes to Kyiv regime. And we are talking about hundreds of planes. So therefore, most likely Kyiv regime still have uh, at least, uh, I don't know, a dozen or two dozen of those Soviet airplanes, Su-25, uh, MiG-29, Su-24. Maybe a few SU-27s also, hard to tell. Also, TASS News Agency's report that according to current uh, head of uh, EU diplomacy, Joseph Borrell, since the beginning of special military operation, EU member states train about 40,000 Ukrainian soldiers and the Kyiv regime received military aid for 30 billion euros. Quite a numbers, by the way, quite numbers that uh, once again highlights involvement, direct basically involvement of EU and uh, NATO in this uh, proxy war against, against Russia. They are no longer hiding it, really. Uh, also, statement from uh, Defense Chief of Germany. Let's, it's, uh, let's read several sentences, uh, but uh, information is... Quite interesting, I guess, uh, in, in some sense. Uh, Germany should prepare for Russian attack. That's a headline. And, well, Germany should be ready to respond to a possible Russian attack. Defense minister of this country, Boris Pistorius, has uh, uh, warned. He said that to prepare to, for such a scenario, Germany and uh, its NATO allies must commit to strengthening their military capabilities. In an interview with the German public broadcaster ZDF, on Monday, the defense chief pointed out that while Germany is not currently under a direct threat of attack, the country should do its best to be prepared for it. If uh, Germany wants to be ready for an attack that you don't know if and when it will occur, then that means you have to aim your arm yourself. And that's what we are currently doing together with the allies in NATO, he explained. Only effective means, uh, Pistorius went on to say that uh, deterrence is the only effective uh, mean of pos positioning oneself against the aggression from the outset as it uh, signals to a potential adversary that the target is capable of striking back. To achieve such a posture, however, Germany must have a credible deterrent and be able to wage a war that is uh, forced upon upon us, he noted. Commenting on the potential scenario in which Russia attacked the uh, Baltics, well, it's not enough for Pistorius to threaten German society with uh, this illusion that Russia will attack Germany ever. Why should Russia even think about it, man? It, it does not make any sense whatsoever. But it's not enough for Pistorius to threaten German citizens uh, with this uh, crazy idea that Russia is going to attack Germany. They went uh, as far as to say that, uh, as to spoke about also illusions that Russia is going to attack Baltic states. If, uh, if Russia needs those Baltic states, man, who needs even EU don't want them. And even EU is uh, most likely are uh, already sick and tired of those Baltic states. Why would Russia need them? Are you joking? But anyway, let's continue. Commenting on a potential scenario in which Russia attacked the Baltics, Pistorius remarked that Berlin was settling up its Lithuanian brigade specifically to address those concerns. The unit compressed of, uh, composed of about 4,900 soldiers is expected to be ready by 2027 and will be the first German force to be permanently stationed abroad since World War II. Well, how are you going to comment this, by the way? This is a trend at this point. Uh, quite clear trend 
in the West when high-ranking officials, one after another, are threatening their own citizens with uh, this uh, illusion that Russia gonna attack. And under this, uh, and once they are, they, they did scare their societies well enough, of course they will have no opposition to spend as much of uh, taxpayers' money as they wish to enrich uh, military industrial complex company, multinational corporations, and themselves also, because at this point it's so obvious that these high-ranking officials of the Western states are operating and acting as they are, if they are uh, lobbyists of the uh, multinational corporations. And most likely they are. They are working for those, uh, uh, or for their, them or for their interests. I mean, for these multinational corporations. It, it, it's, it's, that's how I see it. Anyway, and that's why time after time, more, more and more, we see these kind of statements from uh, different countries, by the way, from Finland to Spain. I mean, all the way. Uh, these high-ranking officials, one after another, are you know, beginning to scare the societies that, you know, if not today, then tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then sometime in the future, Russia gonna attack us because uh, why not? <laughs> that's all arguments that they have. <laughs> It's crazy, man. With the with the similar success, you can uh, state that you know what one one day aliens may attack us, and therefore we should spend all the money that we have on military and uh, on the, uh, this international uh, international corporations, multinational corporations, so that they will protect us, you know, from from aliens. It's it's pure madness, by the way. It's pure madness, but because uh, this uh, huge crap on the mindset of EU societies through these propaganda outlets that Western ruling class have, they can do anything they want at this point. Because vast majority, vast majority in the West, vast majority of society, I don't think will ever be able to see reality, to free themselves from this uh, propaganda that they are under influence of. That's a sad reality, but uh, well, it is what it is. And uh, well, let's continue. Rian Ost is reporting that. Hungary once again stated that uh, whatever uh, whatever Brussels is going to do to continue uh, financing of the regime militarily, uh, support and, uh, and, and finance wise, uh, Budapest is against it and Hungary will not participate in any, any of this uh, craziness of, uh, of Brussels. Uh, this is my interpretation of uh, this information because, uh, well, according to statement of uh, Peter C. Yarto, foreign minister of uh, Hungary, Budapest will not participate in the financing uh, in the financing of uh, weapons to give regime by uh, European peace fund. So Brussels, because uh, Hungary blocked basically this 50 billion aid package that Brussels did come up uh, with uh, recently uh, for next four to five years. Then, uh, you know, because of this, uh, Brussels come up with a new idea, new fund, uh, and this fund has name Peace, Peace Fund, which will send, uh, which will send weapons to give regime, this war to be prolonged, this, this proxy war against Russia to be prolonged as, as long as possible by Western ruling class, and, well, Hungary don't want to have any of it. And uh, and I guess uh, Slovakia will do the same. They will distance themselves from this fund also, although I guess other EU member states will be forced eventually to uh, cut on some social programs inside their countries and uh, redirect additional billions uh, for key regime. Formally for Kiev regime, but in reality, of course, uh, these funds eventually gonna end up in, in bank accounts of military industrial complex and multinational corporations. That's uh, obvious. And in, uh, in pockets of uh, corrupt European politicians, obviously. Anyway, let's continue. Well, also interesting news that uh, Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico, is once again... Uh, gained attention of Russian media, by the way, by his, with his uh, statements. And uh, this time he said that Ukraine must give up uh, some territories to achieve peace with Russia. And well, let's read uh, several sentences here. Ukraine should, concern, should consider to the loss of some uh, of the territories 
that were previously under its control in order to end the conflict with Russia. Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico has said Fico made a statement during the weekend interview with the broadcaster RTVS dedicated to his uh, upcoming visit to Ukraine. The Slovak Prime Minister is scheduled to travel on Wednesday to Uzhgorod, city near the border between the two countries, for a meeting with the Ukrainian counterpart Denis Shmigal. The ongoing conflict between Moscow and Kiev can't be resolved through military means and should end in compromise that might be painful for both sides, he said. What are the Ukrainians uh, waiting for? That the Russians will uh, leave Donbass and Lugansk or that they will leave Crimea? It's uh, unrealistic, Fico insisted. Well, I can understand Fico is coming from. He wants to play some positive role to uh, push this narrative of peace. But uh, when it comes to this uh, initiative itself, that not even initiative, that statement that uh, Ukraine should get ready to uh, compromise with, with Russia and to say, to acknowledge that uh, Donbass, which is Lugansk People's Republic, People's Republic and uh, Donetsk People's Republic, and also Zaporozhye uh, region, Kherson region, and of course Crimea, are parts of Russia, uh, and then peace may be achieved between the sides. Well, I have to disagree with the uh, with the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Slovakia on this uh, reading of big picture because, in my opinion, it's too late now. It's just too late. If Kiev was uh, said uh, something like that, that they will acknowledge Russian control over the, these territories. Uh, like a year ago, it might work, but now, no, this is not happening. High-ranking uh, Russian officials, uh, quite a number of times, uh, basically uh, directly and indirectly, stated that at this point, uh, Western control of Ukraine as a state is an uh, existential threat, existential threat from Russia, and Russia cannot allow this uh, threat to remain, to exist uh, any longer, and therefore. I believe, uh, I believe once this conflict will end, there will be no more state on the name of Ukraine on political map. It will be divided between its neighbors. Russia will regain control over their historical Russian territories and uh, Western neighbors of Ukraine will regain control over the territories that used to be historically part of those countries like Poland, Hungary and, uh, and uh, Romania. That's it. There will be no more Ukraine on political map. This is my understanding. I will give it to 99%, by the way. But that's how uh, things gonna go down. And therefore, as I said, even if the uh, Kyiv regime right now, today, will come up and say that they are recognizing that Donbass and also Kherson region, Zaporozhye region and Crimea are parts of Russia. And if they will propose to Moscow to, you know, conduct some peace talks and, uh, you know, achieve some agreements. I don't think Moscow will agree on that. It's just too late. Why should Moscow agree on that? When, in that case, this Western-controlled so-called state, Ukraine, will, will remain existential threat for Russia. And one way or another, in 10 or 20 years' time, another conflict will erupt. So why should Moscow ever agree on that? It's, it's, it's not happening. And by the way, recently, a former president of Russian Federation and current deputy chairman of uh, Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, was quite clear in his, uh, in his statements when he said that uh, Ukraine as a state is an uh, is existential threat not just for Russia, but also for citizens of this failed state, which is also correct. And he had uh, his reasoning why he's s saying this and, uh, well, I may have my reasoning also, additional reasoning, but he is correct. He is correct. Ukraine cannot remain as an independent state or quasi-independent state because it will be always used against Russia by Western ruling class. That's it. Therefore, there will be no more Ukraine on political map once this conflict will end. Uh, just mark my word, by the way. And I, I'm saying this for quite a while now, isn't it? I didn't come up with this understanding of the situation or this reading of big picture yesterday or day before. I, I'm saying this for uh, I don't know how long. Uh, even before I began uh, making this project, by the way, I was writing about it uh, for years. 
that when, if and when Western ruling class will provoke conflict between Russia and Ukraine, uh, only end of that conflict will be that Ukraine will lose its uh, statehood. That's it. Ukraine will be divided between the, its neighbors. I was writing about it for years and that's how it's going to be. Anyway, let's continue. TAS News Agency is uh, reporting that, well, according to media, by the way, according to media reports, uh, including Axios, Israel through uh, Qatar and uh, Egypt send uh, send a message to, to Hamas that uh, Israel may consider two months ceasefire if uh, Hamas will release all the all the hostages uh, interesting interesting uh, news uh, especially if you take in account how strong state how strong of statements netanyahu and his governments are making whenever any talks are about peace uh, and uh, well if uh, we will probably learn about hamas's answer today or tomorrow and uh, well if uh, any even short term ceasefire agreement will occur uh, between Israel and the uh, and uh, uh, Hamas of course it will be a huge break for uh, civilians in the in the Gaza Strip because uh, we cannot even imagine how difficult their situation is in the Gaza Strip and any ceasefire of course will be a uh, break uh, very very needed break for uh, for civilians so well let's hope sides will manage to agree on 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 uh, truth and maybe then i don't know and some miracle will happen and and uh, this truth will be prolonged let's hope that that will happen at least i mean we can hope about it isn't it also by the way rt is reporting that uh, saudi arabia reveals new conditions for normalizing relationships with uh, israel and let's read here a normalization of the relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel will only be possible if the issue of Palestinian statehood is resolved. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince uh, Faisal bin Farhan has uh, said. Well, yet again, uh, sides were quite close to to normalize relationships, but then uh, then Hamas attack happened on Israel, then Israeli strikes, Israeli ground operation and strikes on, on the Gaza Strip and uh, well, all talks between Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel was hold, put on hold after that. And uh, well, at this point, at this point, uh, I don't think there is any indicators that uh, Netanyahu is willing to talk about statehood of uh, Palestine. It's exactly the opposite is happening. Netanyahu himself and uh, other officials in uh, in Israel are openly declaring that uh, they are not even considering any state for uh, Palestine at all at this point. So I don't know what uh, Saudi foreign minister was hoping for while making these statements, but uh, well, in reality, Israeli government is not willing to even discuss even to think about state of uh, Palestine. That situation right now, maybe things will change in, I don't know, in, in months time. Uh, anything is possible, but uh, well. Also, Commerçant newspaper is reporting that Musk, Elon Musk, uh, head of uh, SpaceX, Tesla, and uh, you know, we all know who is, and Twitter, by the way, of course, uh, X. He was visiting Oswensim concentration camp, uh, Nazi Germany's concentration camp uh, in uh, in Poland, and uh, well, one may say uh, great news if uh, if Elon Musk wants to learn some more about horrors that uh, Nazi Germany was committing during the Second World War. Not just uh, against Jewish people, but against uh, all people, uh, against Soviet people also, by the way, of course. Soviet people died in huge numbers from hands of uh, Nazi Germans during the Second World War. And, uh, well, if, if this is uh, just... Uh, uh, if uh, Elon Musk went to Oswensi to learn some more about history, well, one may 
only upload this but uh, well same time some people may ask questions when they see this picture for example you all recognize this individual isn't it ben shapiro who is uh, probably uh, loudest loudest uh, propagandist of the zionists at this point uh, or one of the loudest and when i see this picture you know i began thinking maybe this is uh, yet another attempt of netanyahu's government and israeli lobby to uh, manipulate with the with the memory of holocaust and uh, and this way justify actions that netanyahu's government is conducting right now in palestine i may be wrong i don't know but uh, for me uh, this picture says just one thing this is a media operation this is a media operation ben shapiro's presence in this picture says it all that's how i read this by the way otherwise i mean uh, of course if anyone wants to learn some more history uh, that's uh, uh, great when it comes to Svensim, uh, of course many of you know or all of you that uh, this concentration camp was uh, liberated by soviet forces under leadership of great soviet general konev in 45 in january of 45 by the way uh, so whenever people want to learn something about history that's great but i mean this uh, uh, story definitely looks like uh, some media operation to me personally just recently musk was in israel and uh, uh, now he's in uh, in Auschwitz. definitely looks like uh, this individual musk have been used by israeli lobby to uh, generate some sympathy towards modern israel and uh, and this way somewhat uh, generate you know uh, ground so that people worldwide will somewhat justify actions of uh, netanyahu's government although i think this is a failed media operation it will not work it will not work because uh, i don't think majority of humanity ever justified uh, it would justify uh, ethnic cleansing and genocide attempting of genocide and that's what Netanyahu's government is doing right now by the way it's ethnic cleansing and they are attempting genocide if they if they are if, if they are not stopped they will they will succeed with uh, with both with ethnic cleansing and with genocide and no matter how many media ops they're going to conduct and uh, who they're going to use in these media operations, I don't think it will work. Because everybody understands, or majority of at least of humanity understands, that Israel, under leadership of Netanyahu uh, and IDF, under orders of Netanyahu's government, are committing war crimes and crimes against humanity, intentionally killing civilians. They are intentionally killing civilians. That's it. And it's never can be justified. I mean, wars may happen. And unfortunately, they are collateral damage whenever large scale military operations are taking place. But when one side or other side, when any side begins intentionally kill civilians, that's a war crime straight away and cannot be justified ever like never can be justified by the way uh what us did to japan when they dropped nukes in hiroshima and nagasaki that's why never can be justified at least in my opinion what uh, uh, us and british did uh, to dresden when they burned down entire city and at least hundred thousand if i'm not mistaken civilians were killed this type of war crime this is our war crimes pure war crimes and they cannot be justified ever ever yet again that's my take on the situation uh my my understanding of of uh, of uh, 
what is uh, right and what is wrong. I mean, some may agree with me, some may not, but well, it is what it is. RT is reporting that US and UK announced new strikes on uh, Houthis during the previous night, late evening yesterday, and during the night time, uh, US and UK began conducting yet another bombing campaign of uh, against uh, Ansar Allah movement. And uh, well, I did so on one of the Telegram channels uh, statement from Ansar Allah organization and uh, in that statement says that US and UK are not going to achieve uh, much with the with the strikes and the uh, Ansar Allah movement going to continue the operations and well I guess there that that statement says it all Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates they were trying by using quite sophisticated weapon systems by the way to destroy Ansar Allah movement and they were they were targeting Ansar Allah for for almost a decade eight or nine years and they didn't manage to achieve much with their strikes. And I don't think uh, US and UK strikes gonna end uh, any differently. They may tell some damage, of course, but I don't think that they're gonna uh, fully destroy battle capabilities of uh, Ansar Allah military wing. And eventually, eventually, I think uh, US, UK, some other NATO member states will send their troops into Yemen. That's that's the direction that things are moving. And also, of course, uh, I think Western ruling class going to use this situation in the Red Sea, this crisis in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden as a reasoning and justification to further increase military assets in the region to deploy additional military assets in the region and then once a certain level will be reached in the military assets Israel may provoke full-scale war with the Lebanese Hezbollah first and then with Iran and uh, well I said quite a number of times before isn't it that in my understanding in my understanding there is a quite high chance that uh, ruling class of the West will use current escalation, may use current escalation in the Middle East uh, in a war, in a cold war with China, against China, and uh, provoke conflict first between Israel and Lebanon, then uh, with Iran also, <coughs> and therefore disrupt shipping in the Persian Gulf and the Ormuz Strait, which will be huge hit on China huge hit on China because uh, China receives uh, huge amounts of energy, oil and gas from uh, Middle East and the uh, vast majority of that volume of oil and gas of course go through Persian Gulf and Ormuz Strait. So I think Western ruling class will use uh, escalation in the Middle East to provoke regional war, then uh, uh, disrupt shipping in the in the Persian Gulf and uh, almost straight to target China because China is the main you know issue here for Western ruling class they are afraid of China because with rise of China entire region of global south is rising on the rise and uh, and therefore uh, Western ruling class is losing dominance and they are scared of that Yet again, you may agree with my reading of big picture, you might not, but, uh, well, time will tell. Anyway, let's continue now. And, uh, well, TAS News Agency reported, by the way, that Houthi rebels conducted uh, yet another strike. Despite uh, these strikes from uh, US and uh, UK, Houthi rebels are maintain maintaining their battle capabilities and they did targeted yet another ship this time in the Aden Gulf, Gulf of Aden, and uh, and uh, this time US Navy transport ship was targeted under the name of Ocean Jazz. I did not see any reports in the media if Pentagon confirmed this information or not, but uh, well, night time there was a strikes on uh, uh, 
Houthi rebels or Ansar Allah movement. And we can interpret that these actions of US and UK as a as a um, retaliatory strikes on Houthis for, for targeting this US Navy ship. Maybe there is some connection there. Uh, or maybe these strikes were also planned uh, way ahead, like a week ago, most likely. But uh, in any ways, I did not see any confirmation from Pentagon that their uh, Navy ship was, Navy transport was targeted in the uh, Gulf of Aden. Also interesting news uh, from Interfax that uh, EU member states finalized uh, their understanding of, uh, of uh, military operation of EU in the Red Sea and most likely this military operation will begin on 19th of February and EU member states, EU is planning to send uh, free warships into the into the Red Sea and uh, if I'm not mistaken by the way this is maybe first or one of the first military operations that will be conducted under the umbrella of EU because usually it's NATO isn't it or individual countries that are conducting operations but here we have a EU operation EU military operation well I, I don't think uh, Washington will be very happy about this development because they want everything, all the European countries to operate under NATO umbrella. Uh, because therefore, you know, under NATO, these uh, forces, EU forces, uh, European forces will be controlled by US. Uh, but, uh, well, it is what it is. Free warships will be sent and, uh, well, even though Italian Vice Prime Minister, what is his name, Antonio Tajani made the statement that EU military mission in the Red Sea are not intended to target uh, Yemen itself. Uh, these uh, EU warships will uh, defend the maritime routes and will uh, shut down uh, incoming incoming missiles and, and the drones. But yet again, I, I would not be surprised if in a week or two weeks time after this EU operation begins, those vessels, those military vessels from EU member states will end up under control of US and the command of US uh, militaries and eventually very very same uh, military vessels will probably participate one way or another in strikes against uh, a Yemen let's see let's see it, it all depends if those ships have uh, any cruise missiles on the board also, Interfax is reporting that, uh, well, high-ranking U.S. Uh, military Vice Admiral, by the way, Brad Cooper, head of uh, Central Command of uh, U.S. Navy, accused Iran uh, of directly being involved in uh, Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. Well, where is the evidence, by the way, that Iran is directly involved? Just show us evidence we all know that Iran is supports Iran supports Houthi rebels. We, it's it's open secret. Everybody knows this. <coughs> but to accuse country of being directly involved in the in the military operations, well, if Iran is directly involved just because they are providing weapons with uh, to to uh, to Ansar Allah movement, then uh, with with that log same logic. Uh, NATO is also directly involved in war against Russia. But if you ask them, they are not involved. That's answer, isn't it? That uh, high-ranking officials in the EU and NATO are giving to journalists that they are not directly involved. No, they're just you know providing some weapons to the regime. This is not direct involvement, according to them. And to maintain this plausible deniability, uh, all the special forces that NATO member states are sending to Ukraine uh, for whatever reasons usually are uh, laid off from army. Those, those uh, personnel is uh, formally are freed from army and are enlisted in some uh, as, as assassins really in some uh, private military company. Just to maintain this uh, plausible deniability in their hands. But very same people from US, from 
EU or NATO are happy to state that, uh, you know what, Iran is directly involved because they are providing weapons to answer Allah movement. So this is, uh, I mean, this is not even double standards, man. I mean, you tell me what the hell is this? And how are you going to communicate with these people? When in very similar situations, in one case, they are saying this is uh, white. And in other situation, they are saying, you know what, this is uh, red. Same situations. But answer is different because uh, that's how West, Western ruling classes operates. And they don't care. That's it. They just don't care. And will not care until they are forced to be. Ria Novosti is reporting that according to, according to uh, media office of administration in uh, Gaza Strip, since the beginning of uh, Israeli strikes on uh, Palestine, more than 25,000 civilians have been killed. And most likely this number is significantly higher because northern part of Gaza Strip is uh, almost entirely in, in ruins. And uh, I guess no one knows how many civilians died under the rubble. Thousands, most likely. Maybe tens of thousands. Because uh, you all seen these uh, videos and, and photos from, uh, from Gaza Strip. Uh, entire settlements are wiped out. And by the way, more than, more than 63,000 63, are wounded. But yet again, most likely, real numbers are much, much higher. RT reports that Egypt rejects Ethiopia's Somaliland port deal. Well, Egypt is getting involved in this uh, row between Ethiopia and uh, Somali. Uh, I did report about these topics number of times in previous updates. Uh, point is that Ethiopia, which is a landlocked country, by the way, wants to... And Ethiopia is a landlocked because after... Uh, Eritrea become uh, independent of uh, Ethiopia. There was a war between the sides. And uh, after that, Ethiopia le uh, lose uh, its access to Red Sea. And now Addis Ababa uh, arrange agreement with um, Somaliland. This is unrecognized, uh, unrecognized uh, republic, formerly part of Somali which is uh, located on the northern side of uh, Somalia, on the inner, inner coast of Aden, Gulf, uh, Gulf of Aden, by the way. And uh, Ethiopia and Somaliland government sign agreement to, and to build a port in a Berber city, which is here, by the way. And, uh, well, of course, uh, of course, uh, Magadishu, capital of Somali, uh, are against it and they are demanding that all the all the agreements between uh, Ethiopia and or any other country in in regards to Somaliland should go through Magodisho because Magodisho because the Somaliland is is part of Somali according to Magodisho and now Egypt is getting involved in this uh, in this situation and uh, well Egypt and Ethiopia also have very difficult relationships, by the way, especially because Ethiopia is building dam, huge dam, already built, I guess, on the Nile. And uh, Egypt was warning for many years that as a result of building of this dam, uh, Nile River will, uh, will uh, lose its water supply in a huge way. And Nile is, of course, a major lifeline for Egypt. And well, relationships between uh, Egypt and Ethiopia is, is, is very difficult. Uh, and now I, uh, I guess Cairo is using this escalation between Ethiopia and uh, Somaliland to get involved and put some pressure, additional pressure on Ethiopia. Uh, well, as I said, world is in, 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 in such a state, by the way, everybody is against everybody. Sometimes it seems like which is uh, unfortunate, of course. And, well, I'm afraid at some point, at some point, we may see some regional conflict in this part of Africa. It's, uh, it's high likely that this will happen because in no circumstances, in my understanding, Ethiopia will 
Stop seeking root to the sea. And, uh, well, they only have two ways. One is uh, through Somalia. One is through Eritrea. Ethiopia and Eritrea was in war. Uh, and uh, relationships are not really great at this, at this point. And, uh, well, other way is uh, Somaliland, which is um, formally part of Somali. So let's see how will things develop, but uh, involvement of Egypt definitely uh, further increases risks that eventually, eventually we may see some uh, some regional conflict there. Because I don't think uh, uh, Addis Ababa or Ethiopia will back down. I just don't see it. Anyway, let's continue. RT is reporting that uh, artificial intelligence threatens jobs uh, worldwide, according to International Monetary Fund. Monetary Fund, but not really surprising information, I guess. Uh, but uh, interesting, same time. So, nearly forty percent of jobs across the globe could be affected by the rise of artificial intelligence, with the high-income economies more exposed than. Uh, emerging markets and the low-income countries. The IMF has uh, warned in the new report and well, I guess uh, all of us will understand this particular report because uh, well, I guess it's only a matter of time and uh, with uh, this revolutionary developments in AI technologies and robotics at some point most likely significant number, I don't know percentage wise how it will be but uh, significant number of jobs human jobs will most likely be overtake by ai run uh, machines it's just uh, inevitable process i guess and uh, and uh, it's also like phil philosophical question now i mean what should which direction sh should humanity move forward uh, you cannot ban for the development of uh, technologies, I guess, but uh, same way, uh, increase uh, increase knowledge in this uh, AI and robotics will eventually may put at risk humans themselves, human well-being. So this is really, I mean, philosophical discussion and also practical. Which, which has uh, practical implications and uh, well, I don't know which way humanity will go, but uh, it seems like uh, at this point we are definitely moving towards further uh, development of AI and robotics. But this is quite interesting that warning comes from IMF, by the way, I did not expect that. You know? RT is, reported that, uh, RT is reporting that Russian oil supplies to China jumped 24% in 2023, according to data. Well, still, it's uh, almost uh, end of January and the statistics numbers from 2023 still are coming in. And, uh, well, this is one of them. Russia move, uh, moved past Saudi Arabia in 2023 to become uh, the largest exporter of oil to China. Chinese customs data released on Saturday showed uh, just over 107 million metric tons of Russian oil were shipped to China in 2023, figure that comes out to 2.14 14 million barrels per day, thus marking a year-on-year -year increase of 24%. The record high crude uh, shipment came despite Ukrainian-related sanctions imposed on Russia, Russian oil exports by the West. Saudi Arabia shipped some uh, 86 million metric tons of uh, oil to China. So just imagine, by the way, when this is very important. When I say that Western ruling class may use current escalation in the Middle East to disrupt shipping in the Persian Gulf and the uh, Ormuz Strait to cut China off the uh, Middle Eastern energy uh, sources. Just look at the numbers just from Saudi Arabia, which is uh, on the second place when it comes to oil imports. 
uh, to China, from by China. Uh, Saudi Arabia uh, sells 86 million metric tons of uh, crude in a year. Yes, that's numbers for 2023. And all this oil, by the way, all this oil goes through Persian Gulf and almost trade. And if something happens there and China will lose this number of uh, oil just for Saudi Arabia, and of course China is buying oil from other Gulf states also. So overall number may amount to 100, 150 million tons. So if China will lose this amount of uh, energy from Middle East, uh, is that will be a huge, uh, huge uh, hit on China from the from the West? Of course it will be. It will devastate China. And by the way, Chinese dependence on Russia will increase. It's already huge, but will increase unimaginably, isn't it? And that's exactly what Western ruling elites want, because I guess they are hoping that first they will cut China off the uh, Middle East, turn energy sources to make sure the Chinese dependence on Russia will reach unprecedented scale. And then, in my understanding, Western ruling class hopes to conduct some uh, regime change in Russia or something like that, so that uh, they will put in power uh, pro-Western uh, let's say politician or politicians, pro-Western forces, and then will move Russia from China towards the West. And in that case, if China will be under risk to lose uh, supplies of energy from Russia also, what are they going to do, by the way? What are they going to do? I guess we'll understand what, what China may do in that case. They will try to... Uh, establish control forcefully if they have to on the closest and most important uh, oil fields and the gas fields and where these closest oil fields and gas fields are from China of course it's uh, Central Asia Kazakhstan by the way rich with oil Turkmenistan rich with gas and of course it's Russia and that's how Western ruling class may hope, may have, have some hopes that they will provoke war between China and Russia and basically uh, provoke global confrontation, which will devastate, uh, especially devastate uh, global East, global South, and uh, who will emerge victorious in this scenario or less damage Western world. And this way, I guess, Western ruling class wants to maintain its dominance over the world by destroying, by provoking global war between China and Russia. If that happens, then of course, India going to get involved, Pakistan going to get involved. So it will devastate global south, absolutely, and globalist. It will devastate the entire world. And eventually, eventually, who going to benefit from this? Western ruling class, or at least they will try. At least they will try. So that's why it's very important, very important for Russia, for China, for India, by the way, for everybody in this world, with the exception of this Western ruling class, to make sure that there will be no regional conflict in the Middle East. So that China will always have at least two or three major routes of energy and would not be put in a position to use force ever because we don't need that in this world you know and when when we are talking about western ruling class we are we all know what they are capable of they don't care about human lives at all they don't care about anything except their own selves and their their own positions and they want to maintain dominance over the world by any means necessary. Let's continue. Let's continue. And uh, well, next information is that, uh, and you may find this news quite interesting. Also, according to Commerçant, uh, a newspaper, Apple paid uh, in Russian budget, by the way, 1.1 billion rubles as a fine 
quite interesting. Uh, and this fine was uh, imposed on Apple by anti-monopoly uh, Department of Russia. Quite interesting, isn't it, that uh, Apple is still here in Russia, operates and are and are willing to pay quite a sum, like 1.1 billion rubles may not be some crazy number for Apple, uh, or, of course, but they are still willing pay to pay fines, big fines, to maintain their presence in, in Russia. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? I don't I don't know if Western media will report about it that Apple just paid more than a billion rubles to Russian budget. And this sum, by the way, this fine went straight away to budget. And this is it for now. This is it for now. I hope you will find this uh, news update interesting. And if so, please uh, uh, Please click that like button, leave some commentary about any topic you like. More likes and comments um, may help my channels to reach wider audience. And uh, if you can, for the very same reason, please share links to my videos with your friends. And if you think this project, this, uh, these channels of mine are interesting, useful, informative and deserve to exist in this field of news and political commentary please consider to support my work with small donations with the uh, through paypal buy me coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page you can see links under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment this is it for now have a great day and take care